Hi, welcome to the next assembly video for the RepRap Prusa Mendel Iteration 2. In this video, we're going to assemble the hot end. So I'm going to go ahead and put this out of the way. This kit came with um, a, um, a J head hot end, and this is a uh, 0.5 millimeter nozzle, um, that, which takes three millimeter filament. Um, this is their latest version. I'm not exactly sure what the version number is, but it's a little bit shorter than the, than the previous versions, which gives you more print area, which is nice. So anyway, let's go ahead and get this thing set up. We'll need the heater resistor and a thermistor. Some ultra copper, high temperature silicone, and I'll need um, some solder and soldering iron, some wire, Some PTFE tubing. I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half. Okay, put the PTFE tubing onto the thermistor. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to install the uh, heater resistor into the uh, um, into the uh, hot end here. As you can see, it, it fits really nicely in here, which is fantastic. Uh, what we need to do is we need to fill it with uh, some silicone, though, to make a really good heat contact and also to help keep it in place and everything. I like to just put it on the hole on one side and squeeze the tube until it comes out on the other side. And, I, and then I know it's filled up really, really well. And then take it um, and push it through. Take some of the excess and you can put it onto the heater heater resistor. Okay. Okay, and then that should be good. Then just go ahead and clean it up. I mainly just need to to get it off of the uh, off of the uh, the wire 
and make sure not to like accidentally get any on the uh, nozzle. If you got any on your fingers, be sure to wash your hands to get that off. Okay, but that should that should be good. Um, go ahead and give you a closer look here. Doesn't need to be fantastic. Okay, and I like to do the same thing for the thermostor actually. Um, just go ahead and dip the thermostor into the end of the silicone and then stick it into the hole on the other side. This hole is quite a bit bigger, so I'm just going to put some more on there. Okay, perfect. That just sort of helps keep it in place, and then it also it also helps um, it helps give the uh, the thermistor uh, you know direct contact with the with the hot end there, so they can measure the temperature accurately. Okay, I'm going to grab my uh, helping hands, which aren't really necessary, but they do help quite a bit. I like to bend these um, straight up. They're a little long, so I'm um, going to snip them about halfway down. Also, usually I wait until the silicone dries before I start before I start making these connections. Makes it makes the process a little bit easier, but you don't have to. Optionally, you can put on some. Heat shrink. Heat up the uh, solder and iron. My favorite thing in the world to do here. Use some solder. Just kidding, it's not really my favorite thing to do. and prime the, the wires here on the resistor. While we're at it, let's go ahead and snip these and prime these wires too. It's really important to make sure that you have a real solid connection on this because, um, you know, in the past, like the very first RepRap I ever built, I didn't get, I followed, I followed the instruction of someone else who recommended using 
um, this wire that I've never used before. It's like a tin wire with like a fabric wrap, which I think it's a like real high heat resistant wire. But I just could not get that stuff to solder to to the um, to the resistor. So I found that copper wire works a lot better, and uh, this gauge seems to be perfectly adequate too, which is what came in this kit. So um, um, the problem is, is that if you have this connection, one day your printer may stop working, and it's because you know one of the wires came off your heater resistor and stopped heating the the plastic, so the filament. So make sure that those those have a really good connection. Okay, we'll also need wires for the uh, thermistor. really need to get a new sponge for my soldering iron. I'm worried I might be ruining the tip on this thing. Oops. Now let's get, I'm just going to try to hurry up and get this soldered. Get that re-secured. Okay, that feels good. I'm going to go ahead and uh, heat up the heat shrink here. Okay, that's good. All right, I'm going to reattach that here to the hot end in just a moment. Okay, and then um, once this is attached, uh, I'm going to go ahead and heat up these this heat shrink here. Uh, the only purpose for the heat shrink here is to uh, make sure that the that you don't actually accidentally um, make a connection. To those wires when it when it has power because it'll cause it to arc. All right, now it's up, up it's kind of up to you as to how you would like to finish mounting this. Um, on this on this set on this end, what I like to do, and if you have any, you can use some ten millimeter Captain tape. Put that uh, in there. And I like to run it around the bottom here. This is heat resistant tape, so keep in mind that 
you know, it's actually going to, in a way, kind of help keep some heat insulated into there, which is why I like to put it around the bottom section, because that will help um, keep it, um, it'll help keep the, um, the heat sink open for, to air, to help keep it cool. So that's pretty much how I like to uh, set up and wire up the heater resistor and the thermistor to the hot end. That should take care of it. That should be good and stable for a very long time to come. Um, you do want to make sure you remember which, if you're using the same color for the thermistor and the hot end, <laughs> which one is the thermistor and hot end. It's important to remember that, but uh, you can always look at it later to figure that out or mark it with a marker or something like that. But uh, that's good for the hot end, and this is going to get secured to the extruder in the next step. Um, so I think I'll go ahead and do that in another video. Thanks for watching.